So I am just about finished switching out my camera setup from the kind of cheap little Amcrest cameras and the Synology surveillance station that I had working together to Real Link and soon to be eventually Real Link and Freegate, which is a free and open source NVR solution. I have not only purchased my own equipment, but Real Link has set over some of their other cameras for me to go ahead and try out. And I've tried out a wide range of their things, their NVR solution, some of their POE cameras. We have the uh, floodlight camera, a solar camera, a whole lot of stuff. This is going to be my review of all of it. And I am going to start with the NVR solution. This is the one thing that I purchased myself. And you can see here it is listed for basically a thousand dollars for eight cameras and their little NVR box here. I was scurrying Facebook Marketplace and I found this. You can see it's sold. I'm the one that bought it for three hundred dollars. Not a bad deal. It was such a good deal. I didn't even read the uh, description here properly as this does not support RTSP or ONVIF protocols. Which, for what I eventually want to do, is essential. And again, that is kind of feeding everything, all the media streams from these cameras to Freegate, so I have that open source solution with localized AI, home lab nerdy stuff that I am really looking forward to getting going. This is the kit that I purchased. I have five of these cameras currently in use. These are what the cameras look like. And like I said, these things do not support streaming. You can't log into the individual cameras through the web UI or their app. Granted, when it comes to NVR, they are plug and play, but at least on the surface level, that's really all that we could use them for. Granted, they are great cameras. Let's go here. You can see I have the Real Link NVR as the entire thing here. And then from there, I select the channels. So then that kind of makes that sharing complicated. You can't share out specific cameras like this that are connected to an NVR. You can only share out the whole NVR to specific people. So that makes kind of managing that a little bit difficult. East side camera here, you can see the stream is pretty good quality. As I go into the grass, it does kind of pixelate a bit. And if I go into the individual setting for the camera itself, go to stream, you could see that we are rocking about a uh, 2K resolution. So these are little 2K cameras here that came with the kit does have multiple streams and I will talk about this a little later at the end but I did find kind of a workaround to get these NVR cameras these like cheap kit cameras into something like Freegate is from the NVR so using these cameras I'm going to have to have the real link NVR up and running all the time but I can individualize these streams coming out of the NVR to a third-party application but honestly at $300 for this much equipment I'm still happy with the deal that I got. These cameras do look sharp, but they don't have really any other features other than they do support night vision, which works pretty good unless if there's something in the way, but that works with any other camera. There's no two-way audio. It does pick up audio itself. Hello there. This is a uh, test of the audio. I'm probably about uh, seven feet from the camera. This is maybe about 20 feet from the camera with wind blowing AC exhaust. Another thing to note with the NVR, is to actually like add cameras and like move these around within these various channels here. You, you actually need to plug it in and it's, it's right over there. Hook it up to a display, use their mouse and actually manage everything on the MVR itself, which just kind of is inconvenient to do. And it's on the settings within the NVR itself that you would go and actually open it up to allow these streams per the individual channels to be able to be exported and viewed. And it does allow for some uh, battery cameras that don't have the RTSP features that these ones also do not have to actually allow that. Specifically, the solar powered camera that we'll be talking about in a little bit only works with Real Link apps, but I was able to get it into the NVR, which then you could use that to send it to third party applications. So if you're going to buy a kit, um, the, the, there are some things to note with that. There are uh, difficulties if you want to go out of the Real Link platform. And that takes us to the uh, living room camera here. If I open it up, we can see what it is specifically. There it is. It's a little dome camera. They sent over two of these for me to review and check out. And they're super cool. When I first looked at them, I kind of assumed that it would have a motion functionality. It does not. That would be nice. But it does have two-way audio. Within the settings here, we could see the, the, the settings. <laughs> the stream itself is 2K at 15 frames per second. I can edit this up to 4K, which is nice. And then we could also go up to 25 frames per second. But for me, I don't need a 4K stream of my living room personally. 
Like the others, there is motion detection. We do have light. This one has a spotlight, which is incredibly bright. I have one in the kids' room, and I accidentally turned it on through the app one time, and oh boy, they did not like that. Additionally, it does have two-way audio, so you could talk through it, which is incredibly convenient if you're like not home and you need to like say, hey, can you answer your phone, or something like that through it. But yeah, these are working really good, and for the, the whole setup that I have going on, the actual NVR does have PoE on the back, but the cameras are so far and wide, I don't want to run like 100 foot, like multiple 100 foot cords into one thing, so I have it kind of going up through the like closet, I'm in basement level, it goes through my bedroom closet in there, we have a little, uh, it's an Omada switch with uh, 8 PoE ports, and a lot of those are running through, or a lot of the cords from those are running through the attic, which absolutely was miserable to go up and install. So I ran all that into the rooms and all the outside cameras, as well as various Wi-Fi access points, but I'll talk about that a little bit more in a actual uh, kind of Omada setup video that I do plan on making. But the cameras I am using indoors come at about $100 a pop, so definitely not as good of a deal as I got getting it used on Facebook Market. Still pretty good. You can see if I zoom in here, it's pretty good quality. Let's test 4K real fast. Let's up this stream to 4K, save that. All right, so let's zoom into that snake again. Oh yeah, definitely a lot crisper. I mean, it's not super clear, but it's pretty good. So this is the uh, 4K stream zoomed in, and this right here is the uh, 2K stream. So you be the judge. And from there, that takes us to our floodlight camera. You can see ridiculously wide angle, 180 degrees here. The exact model is the Real Link Duo Floodlight POE. And where this currently is, I actually had a really kind of tacky old school floodlight. Ripped that out. Uh, ended up having to redo some of the wiring because it was uh... Lord have mercy. Got all that installed, plugged in PoE, the floodlight itself works great, it's LED lights, no issue there. And the floodlights actually just use power from PoE, so I didn't actually have to kind of wire in hard power to it, which is awesome. But it was nice, it came with a little kind of guide to actually drill the holes, there's a little mounting plate, you just put that on, slide. it's a pretty straightforward installation process, it was no problem at all, and plugging it in showed up right away when I did a land scan, and here it is. You can see right here, it is a super wide display. I could go a little smaller if I want to, but for this, I do like the bigger quality or the more uh, pixels because there is definitely a lot more being shown. You can see if I zoom into this flag here, pretty good quality. And it is basically wall to wall. So if I go over here, you could see the entirety of the wall here. And if I go to the other side, it is a slightly leaning in that direction, but you could see the walls right here. So I am missing probably about a foot there but I could adjust that to make it absolutely perfect if I wanted to. This one of course has motion detection. We do have the floodlight settings here and you could set the smart modes based on how you want the light to turn on. So it could be uh, instead of all motion, you could disable like vehicles and pets. So if you only wanted it to turn on when it detects a person, you do have that option or you can set it in timer mode and kind of change it how you want to from there. For audio, this does have two way audio, which is nice. And this is a specific model if you're interested in that. For a uh, security camera, it's pretty good. So out here is the camera that is the solar powered one. Again, it has that super wide angle view. So I see basically fence to my neighbor's house in the back. Kind of dramatic, but the coverage is awesome, which is nice. And the battery lasts absolutely forever to the point that I do wish one of the settings, which I've been fighting with, and I don't think I could change it, is it automatically enters standby mode after a certain amount of time meaning it needs to have like the mobile app or something open up to connect to it to see that live feed and that does add complications to the kind of free gate setup that i'm going for with this thing and i do get why they have that it is a battery camera but the battery is good enough that it does last and with the solar power it lasts overnight just fine even if that live feed was going i would at least like the opportunity to be able to actually test it, maybe change the settings so it lasts longer without standby mode, so on, so forth. So if you're trying to do a setup like I am trying to do, getting the battery cameras from 
Rio link probably isn't the best idea, but if you're somebody who's just going to depend on their app for things, it's pretty good. And of course it does have all the other features that the uh, one in the front has when it comes to the two-way audio, really good person, car detection, things like that. But again, that's another reason why I want it in Freegate because there are way more options when it comes to tracking various animals. There's even an option to be able to detect bird species, which is interesting. I don't know how well that's going to work because at least in my initial testing of Freegate without configuring it too much, the uh, object detection is questionable at best. I, I can probably make it better, but it's that's an ongoing project. So in conclusion, when it comes to doing something that I am trying to do, all of their power over internet cameras are phenomenal. But if you are finding cheap ones and they were part of a kit, do note that you are going to have to have a real link in VR, which if that's what you want, hey, there you go. You get a really affordable setup with that. But the power over internet cameras that I find myself liking are all about $100 per, which is up there. Battery cameras, like I said, are perfectly fine if you are going to just be in their app and ecosystem. Works fine. So ultimately, I do hope this video has helped you out if you're looking into Reolink cameras. Do your research. Reolink seems to, uh, their biggest pro is also their biggest con as they have so many different models and the various models and the different classes support different features. So when you buy a model, you have to really do your research to figure out it's going to have exactly what you need have the uh, features and the third party support that you're going to need. So it's uh, something you're gonna have to research. I'll link down below to the cameras that I have used with notes on who they're good for, why you should or shouldn't buy it. So go ahead, check that down below. Of course, they're all affiliate links, but if you don't want to use my affiliate link, just go on their website, look up the model you want and life is good. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.